Hi everyone, Mr. Boultry here bringing you video 2.3 where we're going to talk about how we're going to debrief the buggy lab. So today in class, we ran the buggy lab. So you should have all of your data in the data table um, from the lab today. And you may have even had time to start your analysis or maybe even finish your analysis, which is awesome. But if you haven't finished your analysis, make sure to do that now before next class. So I'm going to be asking that you submit a picture of your analysis with this video. And I want to talk about some of the common places where people mess up the analysis. Um, just in case that you did that, you now have the time to go and fix it. So the first is that make sure that your position is on the vertical axis and your time is on the horizontal axis, because if you have them flipped, then we're not going to be able to compare your results to everyone else in the class, which is just, it's just going to make it hard to compare. And just so you know, it is totally okay to have this negative region underneath the horizontal axis. All that means is you're going to have some negative numbers for the position, which might even match your experiment, because that just means that your cart was to the left of the origin, which is totally okay. So negative positions are okay, and it's not something to be freaking out about. So the other thing, the other common mistake that I see with people doing the analysis is not doing the analysis all the way. So in order to have a complete analysis, you need to make sure to graph your data, draw a line of best fit, if your data is linear, write the equation, and then offer a meaning for the vertical intercept and the slope of your line. So here, you want to give me your best guess, and it's okay if you don't get the answer 100% perfect, but um, one way to help um, improve your answer is to look at what are the units associated with each of these things, because if you can figure that out, then it might improve your, the way that you're thinking about the meaning of the vertical intercept and the slope. So with this video, I would like for you to attach a picture of your analysis, just so I can see how you did and start comparing the results from the different groups because that's going to help us with our buggy lab debrief. So debrief is a verb, which means to talk about what happened and try to figure out what it means. So I would like for you now to flip to the next page in your lab notebook and title it buggy lab debrief. In this video, I'm not going to give you all of the answers about what happened, but I am going to introduce some questions that I would like to guide our conversation in the next class. So if you take notes on these questions, you'll be more prepared to engage in the conversation that we're going to have next class. The first thing that I'd like to have a conversation about with the lab is, so we did the position versus time, but how would your graph look different if we uh, instead did displacement versus time? Or what if we did distance versus time? How are these three graphs going to look different? And what are the benefits of some of the different graphs? For example, why do most scientists like to use position versus time graphs over the other? What information do we lose in the displacement versus time graph? What do we lose in the distance versus time graph? So you don't have to have all these answers, but these are, this is the kind of conversations we're going to be having in our next class. If you can just have these three graphs in your lab notebook with maybe even a guess as to what you think they would look like for your data, then that's going to be more than enough for you to come prepared for our class discussion. And the other thing you've already done is by offering what you think is the meaning of the vertical intercept and the slope. But to start helping you think about that even further, I noticed when I was going around that different groups had different results. And that doesn't mean that one group did it right or one group did it wrong, but I want to start thinking about what is causing those differences. Where are those differences coming from? So I only had time to grab two groups results, but here we have the blue team and the green team. Um, and I just want you to start thinking about why does the blue team and the green team have different vertical intercepts? Why do they have different slopes? And if you can answer those questions, then you're going to be well on your way to crushing the debrief that we're going to do in the next class. So like I said, you do not have to have the perfect answer, but you do have to have buggy lab debrief labeled at the top of the next page with some of these questions written down so that we can talk about them in our next class. Which, by the way, is a class that I'm super duper looking forward to and hoping that we have a really interesting discussion about what everything means with the buggy lab. So be sure to, in your video notes, submit not only your lab analysis, but also any guesses that you have for the debrief for our next class. So this is Mr. Voltry wrapping up video 2.3, and I will see you in our next class for that debrief discussion. Go Bears!